and so pray for her. Uh, she, he was in critical condition, and he'd had some health issues, so pray for him that the Lord would help, or pray for that family that the Lord would help him. Amen. Anyone else got a special spoken prayer request tonight before we, before we go under evening service, anyone? All right, we're going to be doing something a little different tonight. How many of you brought your Bible? About everybody brought a Bible. All right, you're going to need it. Amen, amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to gather in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank you, God, for all your grace and your goodness, and, Lord, for what you've done, Lord, for us here at the house of God today. We are grateful to you. I pray for Sister Debbie. God, I pray that you give grace to that family. Father, her brother's passed away. God, you know the need there, and I pray, God, that you'd help. And God, give a... Uh, give ample grace, God, in this time of need. And bless this service tonight. Bless our church. And God, help us that all we do will be to thy glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, if you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Acts, chapter number 4. Acts, chapter number 4. <clears throat> and as I say, this is going to be a little different tonight. But we may do this a few nights uh, simply because I, I, I believe the importance of it and... Uh, I don't know how long we'll be on this particular subject, but I, but I feel like the Lord has directed us here tonight and for the next couple of services anyway. And in Acts chapter number 4, uh, Peter has been preaching, and he has come under some fire, and he has answered full of the Holy Ghost. We find back in the earlier part of the chapter, he, uh, you know, he, he, tells, he tells the, the Pharisees, the priests that he comes before, Verse 12, he tells them, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. I've got written, uh, written beside that in the margin of my Bible. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And that's how that no other name can man be saved but Jesus. And that was the, that was the preaching of the New Testament church as it, as it was being birthed. Now that's what the book of Acts is. It's a... It's a, it's a a uh, book uh, where there's a, a transforming going on and Jesus is gone. The, the New Testament church has been born and there is a, uh, a, a period here in when, you know, when, when the early church has been born where supernatural things uh, come to pass and, and uh, Peter is preaching Jesus. Now we give a lot, Peter get, gets a lot, of, a lot of heat sometimes for his mistakes, but uh, when it all, you know, when it all was said and done, Peter made a great man of God. Now, uh, verse number 13 tells us this. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they, had, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Now, they saw that they had been with Jesus. Now, that's something, friend, uh, to know in your heart that you've been with the Lord. And it's something for others to notice that you've been with the Lord, that you've been praying, that you've been reading the Word of God, that you've spent some time alone with Him. And I realize more and more every day how much, how, how neglected I, or how neglectful that I am of spending time with the Lord. I need to spend more time with the Lord. I need to spend more time in the Word of God. I need to spend more time in prayer. The New Testament started that way, and, and friend, even today we should do that. We should be like... Uh, the early disciples and the, those earlier followers that we spend much time uh, in prayer and in reading of the Word of God uh, that, that is necessary to help our spiritual life. Now, uh, I'm not going to read all of this. I'm going to go down to verse number 23. And being let go, they went to their own company. They put them in bonds. They let them go. They went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voices to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. Now they begin to pray. Uh, they lifted up their voice to God, and this is a lifting up of the voice of prayer to God. And you notice the first thing they did when they started praying. And friend, if our, if our prayer life is going to be an effectual prayer life, then you and I must... Uh, follow the guidelines of prayer uh there's there's god won't hear us if there's sin in their lives we know that so the first thing when we pray is that we must come clean before god we must get our sins if there's sin in our lives uh, we must get them uh before the lord and get get them under the blood and get forgiveness and then we acknowledge who god is and that's what exactly what they did when they began to pray they first acknowledged who god is uh, they said, 
They lifted their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that which with all boldness they may speak thy word. Now, this is a prayer. And they faced great controversy. They, they faced great persecution in that day. The disciples did. And the prayer was that not that they would have grace to get through it, but that they would have holy boldness to stand in that day. Now, we're living in the last days of time. Friend, you say, you, know, you, you say, preacher, I've heard that all my life. Listen, it's as plain as the nose on my face. Amen. I've got a pretty plain nose. Everybody can see it, and it's pretty plain. That Jesus is coming soon. And he, he's coming, and, he, and he's in these last days that we live in. I know not what persecution that we may face. I don't know what persecution I may face for preaching the word of God, but God, I pray that he would, he would grant me holy boldness that I might proclaim the word of God and preach it of a truth. And also those that follow the Lord would have holy boldness in these last days to proclaim who Christ is. <clears throat> by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that thy signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. I want to concentrate on verse number 31 tonight uh, for just a little bit and focus upon what he said here. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. Now that shows the power of prayer. Uh, praying, a praying church is a, is a church that will do great and mighty things for the Lord. A praying church is one where the Spirit of God manifests himself uh, during the services, and I believe we're a praying church, or else, you know, uh, I like to preach myself to death this morning. I, I mean, I honestly, when I got the car, I was beat. And I, you know, I, every time I preach, I'm starved to death after I get through. And that's, that's the typical preach. You find any preacher and they're grabbing for a snack after they get through preaching. I don't know why. So I stopped down at the little store to get me something to eat or, you know, get me a snack. And I got in there and was trying to tell that girl something other than there, and I couldn't hardly talk. I thought, oh, my, no wonder I need a snack. <coughs> but that, that, is a, that is not because of me. That's because of the presence of the Spirit of God. So he's in our church, but how much more can we have of the Lord Jesus? How much more do we want? Do we want enough of the power of God around here that it'll shake the place? You say, preacher, do you believe that? Listen, I've been in services before where I was afraid to move, literally afraid to move because I didn't know what God was going to do next. And uh, it wasn't necessarily a shouting service, but it's where the sweet presence of the Spirit of God moved over a congregation in such a manner that it felt like you would, you would if you'd moved, you would disturb the, the holiness of God. You would, you would disturb the, the presence of the Spirit of God. What a great, what an awesome feeling that is. I love that. And in that way, the, you know, I've been in services where the house was shaken by the power of God. We need that. In these last days we live in, we need the power of God more than anything uh, in our lives. We need the power of God on our lives. So they were assembled together. Uh, the room was full. They were assembled together. And the Holy Spirit of God moved upon them because of their prayer. Their prayer is what led to this. Now, friend, if you want to feel the presence of God, you get, with, you get along with the Lord in prayer and let him, let him bless you. Now, some of the greatest times I've had with the Lord have been by myself in prayer. And uh, <coughs> maybe a way, you know, maybe a way, maybe a way with a few others. There were, uh, some of you used to go away to pray. And we'd go, uh, you know, we'd, we'd get out and we don't do it anymore. Most people don't have never experienced this. But how many of you have ever went to a rock altar? That might be something we need to, we need to do. 
Uh, we would go and, and we would carry a rock to a rock altar. I've had, we, I've had them in, in the church before. And with that rock would be, a, would be a, a something on our heart we wanted to pray about. And in representation of that prayer, we'd lay a rock on that rock altar. And we pray over that. And every time we come, we'd take, a, we'd take a rock. It might be for the same thing every time, but that was a testimony that there was something we wanted to pray about. And we prayed. And, and the Lord would bless and God would move. And, and uh, uh, we never took the rocks away. We just kept, kept piling the rocks up, just to have, not, not for something that we'd worship that rock altar or anything like that, just as a representation that we, uh, you know, that we wanted to have God do something special in our lives and God's blessed that and so uh, we'll think on that as we go down the road but prayer is is the reason that God's people live victoriously or lack of it is why God's people live defeated and I believe certainly that it's all by prayer it, and God blesses me and God helps me but I I think Lord how much more could you bless me if I would just pray more there's a prayer of Jabez that we may talk about later and where Jabez prayed the prayer that uh, God would bless him indeed and that God would enlarge his coast, enlarge his borders. And we may preach on that later. But I'm, I'm telling you, friend, tonight, prayer is the one thing most needful, I believe, to all believers is a, is a greater and better prayer life. And I'm preaching to myself as much as anybody in here tonight. But we find, I begin to study on prayer, and I use this as a text scripture for tonight, and again, I'll read it. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And that was when they prayed. Now, do I expect God to bless me without communication with him? Not a whole lot. Now, God's blessings are upon his people. I believe that. But did you know God desires our conversation with him? Now, many... Many times I'm quick to, to, to go to God when I need something, and yet when I don't need anything, I'm not as quick to go to the Lord and thank Him for what He has done for me. But there ought to be a time in our life when, you know, when once a day at least, we just go to the Lord and say, Lord, thank you. I don't, I, I'm not going to ask you for one thing. I just, just thank you for what you've done for me. And let God bless us in that manner. But when we do pray, when we, he, he said, let your, uh, you know, uh, the, that we're to let our petitions be made known unto him. We're, we are, he, he likes for us to ask him for things, but, but he wants us not to just ask him that we might consume it upon our own lust or that may, we might just do it just to, uh, you know, just to say we prayed about something. But, but God wants us to honor and to adore him and to worship him in our prayer life. Lord, help me. I'm getting more under conviction. Every, every word I say, it's, I'm getting more under conviction about my prayer life. Lord, help us to pray. God, help us to pray. Now, I, I, I'm going to be the first to admit my prayer life has been better in the past, and I believe probably everybody in here can say that. Uh, we, have, we have ups and downs. Now, I, I, I'm not saying that I don't pray. I do pray. But, but I, I will admit to you that, that I've had better prayer times, uh, you know, in the past than sometimes I do now. So I want to get back to that myself. I want, I want to get back where I'm closer to communication with the Lord than I've ever been. And I believe that comes by two things. By our, by our personal, you know, our personal will that we are going to pray. This old flesh does not like to pray. I'm just telling you. I'm just being perfectly honest with you. This old flesh does not like to pray. The inner man, that spirit that lives within you, it says pray. And that old flesh and the devil comes and says, well, you don't have enough time to pray. Now, if I don't have time, then I, I'm spending my time on something else too much of the time. So we do have the time to pray. Everybody's got 24 hours in every day. Everybody, everybody's got the same amount of time. And we should use it wisely unto the Lord. And the Lord help us that we would increase our, our time in prayer and in fellowship with the Lord through our prayer life. We talk to God through, through prayer. He speaks to us through his word. And, and that's how he's speaking to us tonight is through his word. The Bible is full of prayer. Now, I run some numbers here so you can write these down or you can just listen to, listen to them. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. The word pray 
is in the Old Testament 240 times. It is in the New Testament 66 times. Now, let me add this. Many times in the Old Testament, the word pray is used as an entreaty, as to, as to ask someone for something. The, the Bible says, and I may have a scripture wrote down here or not, I'm not sure, I've got a lot, but many times the scripture or somebody will be speaking, they say, I pray thee, or we pray thee, or we pray you. That is an entreating. That is a, a, a pray of entreating. It's not a prayer to God. It is just, it's just a pray. You know, they pray that, uh, that someone would do something. Now, prayer in itself is, a, is mentioned 170, 107 times. The Old Testament 76 times and the New Testament 31 times. So that's the word prayer. Uh, the word praying is 20 times in the scripture. Old Testament 6 times and New Testament 14 times. The word prayed is mentioned 65 times in the scripture. Old Testament 31 times. The New Testament 34 times. Now, if you don't believe all this, you can count them for yourself. Amen. You can get your Bible down and count them for yourself. And then the only other word that I could come up with, and there may be some more. If you know of another one, I'll add it in later. But the word prayest, P-R-A-Y-E-S-T, is twice in the New Testament. And uh, I believe both of them are in the book of Matthew. But that gives us a total of Old Testament words for prayer, 353 times the new testament 147 times and that's a total of 500 times in the word of god that pray prayer praying prayest and if there's another one if you if you can find it if you can uh, find some way to relate to that then you let me know and i'll figure that one in but now it it becomes a supreme importance prayer does when we take it uh, as what the word of god teaches now like we say the word pray uh, it sometimes is not used at that, but prayer, 107 times, that's when someone has, has made a prayer and someone has talked to the Lord by prayer 107 times. When people are praying, 20 times. When it, when it gives the, uh, you know, when it gives in the connotation of people praying, they're, they're praying, they're talking to the Lord. And then after prayer, they had prayed, as in the verse that we read and when they had prayed 65 times in the scripture, 34 times in the New Testament where people prayed, and they had prayed to the God of heaven. So uh, we find out all of this, and I believe through that, through those simple numbers, we can understand that prayer is a very important thing to God. It is important that we pray to God. It is important that we talk to him. What did Jesus spend a great deal of his time in his public ministry? What did he spend a great deal of time in doing? He prayed. A matter of fact, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed till his blood became as uh, till his sweat became as great drops of blood. He play, prayed in earnest. And just before, as we was preaching to you this morning, the time spent before we in his life before we came to the subject in which we preached upon. He had been spending time in prayer. Many times you find in the New Testament in the ministry of Christ where he went alone to a solitary place to pray, where he got away from the crowd to pray. And, uh, you know, while he was in the crowd, people were coming to him. You, you say, well, why did he have to pray? Why was it necessary? Because he was God himself. Why did he have to pray? He was God, yet he was man. And that man side of him conversed with the God side of him. And that's how, he, that's how his body received the strength by his conversation with the Father. Now listen, I cannot explain all that to you. I don't understand all of that. I understand God is God. I understand Jesus is Jesus. I understand the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. But I, and I believe that they're all one. And uh, I believe that Jesus was just as much God as he was man. That is, that is who he is. That is his person. And he, if he found it necessary to pray, how much more necessary should it be to you and I to pray? Now, I want to get, I want to get you introduced to this just a little bit tonight. And we'll not get through all of these. I'm just going to go through some of them. And I want some audience participation. 
All right? That's why I ask everybody if you had your Bible. So this is going to be, uh, this has been fun in the past when I've done it before. I've not done it here, but this has been fun in the past and, and very enlightening and very, uh, you know, very uh, uh, not entertaining, but it's been very enlightening and it's, it's helped a lot of people to, uh, to grasp some verses that they might not, you know, they might not otherwise grasp. Now, I haven't looked up every, I haven't written down every scripture that I've, told you about the times of but I have picked selected scriptures uh, so that we might <clears throat> so that we might see some scripture concerning prayer uh, someone look at, and it doesn't matter who the first one to get it you read it and if you if you're the first one to get it every time it don't matter you read it and, and if you're quick then we'll be quick if you're slow amen we're, we'll see where we can go tonight now I gotta get my well Somebody got my tick pen. I had a tick pen. Well, I don't know what I did with it. All right, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll try to, here, here we go. Okay. So I mark off what we've done so we don't do it. All right. Uh, 2 Kings 4 in verse number And prayed, shut the door, and prayed. Now, uh, that that's a scripture that enlightens what you do. That's one of the scriptures. You shut the door, and you, many, many times it's better off. We're better off to get in our prayer closet. Now, does that mean you necessarily have to go in a closet and shut the door? If you want to do that, that's fine. I've done that. I've went in a closet, moved the garbage out of the way, the junk out of the way, whatever's on the floor. And I prayed in a closet, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, however you want to do it. But the whole idea is to get away alone and shut the door to the outside world and pray. There was a particular time in my life when I needed some answers to a few things. And I may have told this before, but it's all right. And, and I, wanted to, I wanted God to answer. I, I wanted something from the Lord. I, I tell you what I wanted. I wanted the fire of God to burn in my soul as never before. And so of the evening, when I would come home, and I'd wait till it got dark, and I would go up on the hill behind my house. I've got, there's a little hill up there. I'd go up on that hill behind my house, and I'd gather me some firewood together. I had some laying there that I kept for such purpose, and I'd build me a small fire. And I'd pray until that fire went out. And then I'd go back. I did that, I don't know how many nights in a row, how many... It went on for a long time. I prayed, Lord, I want the fire, as an example, this fire I'm burning right here, I want it to burn in my soul. I want the fire of God to burn in my soul. You know what? After a while, God answered that. Amen. God answered that prayer. And it had nothing to do with me starting that fire. That was just what, that was just what I felt like I should do. It had nothing to do with that fire. I could have went up there without a fire. But that's, that's what I'd done. And I prayed let fire went out. And if I put a lot of wood on that fire, I prayed a long time, but I prayed to let fire, you know, went down the embers and it quit flaming, and I'd go back and ask. Now, I never, did, I never asked the neighbors what they thought about that. That may be why they don't bother me much anymore, you know. That man's crazy. He goes up there and builds a fire, and you hear him a mumbling and, a, and a, you know, and I didn't pray silently. I just, I, you know, I didn't yell real loud, but I just prayed. But I got away from everything. I got away from the house, got away from the TV, you know, got away from everything, and I went up on that little hill. Now, there, there, you know, there's people you can see. It's not, it's not like I live in a secluded place, but I got up there, and I prayed, and I called out to God. Prayer in a secluded place with the door shut. 2 Kings 19 and verse 15. What did you notice about that verse when he's talking about praying? What did Hezekiah, what did he recognize first when he began to pray? And he, he set out his prayer life. And this is Old Testament now. 
he set out with his prayer life of acknowledging who God is. And it's, you know, it's easy. It's real easy to get, to get on it. Lord, I, you know, thank you for salvation. Lord, I need this. I need that. Lord, will you do this? Lord, will you do that? But I try to make it a habit of acknowledging who God is. And I was out the other night, and I, I'm standing there, and I'm bad to stargaze. There's something about the, the heavens that just really interests me, and I'm, I'm out there checking to see if that star that's supposed to be point due north all the time. I had my compass out just to see if that was right, and it is, so if you ever get lost, uh, it's that, uh, it's that uh, star on the Big Dipper, and if you want to head north, you just go that direction. It is right. But I got thinking, Lord, you put them stars up there for some reason. Some reason you designed and laid those stars out. You know why I did it? So people that never had a compass could navigate. You know, and I began to stand there, God, you're God. And sure enough, the Bible's right. Beside thee, there he is none else. And so we acknowledge God for who he is when he prays. And he, he likes that. That is something that God desires. Uh, that's something that he's a jealous God. The Bible says he's a jealous God. And he wants our adoration. He wants our praise. And God will get worship. Uh, he, he's got a, a whole lot of creative beings that all they do is worship him. And he, and he, he wants that of us. And I believe when we acknowledge God in our prayer life, when we pray and acknowledge God, I believe that is as much a part of worship as anything we do. It's when we adore Him and worship Him for who He is. All right, Ezra chapter number 10 and verse number 1. <clears throat> verse 1. What did prayer bring in Ezra's life? What did that bring in that life? It brought him weeping to his feet. It brought him in confession of sin. And others saw that and others saw, and, and, and they came and they joined in prayer. Friend, I'm telling you, we're, we're missing out. God's people are missing out. I'm missing out uh, because my prayer life is not what it should be. And I don't know if we'll put these on the, you know, I, I don't even know if I, if, if, if I, you know, I may tell Frank not to even put these on the air right yet till we get, till I get, you know, till I get a couple of these things settled in my own life. Amen. I need to pray more. And, uh, of course, I don't guess, uh, Brother Frank, you can go ahead and put it on if you want to. I guess it don't matter if people know that I know that I need to pray more anyway. Uh, but I need to pray. Now, let's change direction here just a little bit uh, somebody look up one more Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse number 4 somebody look that one and then we're going to take another word and look at a few of those quickly Nehemiah chapter number 1 and verse number 4 <clears throat> Fasted Nehemiah. He fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Now, I, I don't know how much of the fasting part we'll get into prayer, but did you know fasting is a very much an important part of prayer? I, I, I don't know who fasts anymore. Now, it's been a while since I fasted. Uh, but it might be. Oh, don't, don't laugh at me. I know it looks like it's been a long time since I fasted. I heard that little giggle back there. Here comes the roly-poly preacher again. Well, I've lost 14 pounds, so I'm getting there, amen. But anyway, if, if we get to the part, and, I, and we've got, I've got some scripture for that, if we get to the part where we really know, you know why you fast? You, you fast and nobody, any, when I'm fasting, nobody ever knows it but my wife. And all the reason, I, all the reason she knows it, she wonders why I'm not eating. And I tell her, nobody else has to know, I tell her, so that she won't be concerned about me not eating. And she knows what I'm doing when I say, no, I'm not eating today. She knows exactly what I'm doing. And she won't, she won't bother to, you know, to try to get me to eat or try to fix me. And, and you say, well, preacher, I can't do that. Listen, I have fasted. And after, you know, after the first few hours, my mind's begin to clear up, you know, after I overcome the hunger. And I begin to realize why I was doing what I was doing. And then the food just don't seem to me as, as much of a matter. 
Now, it might be just a day. It might be two days. Or it might be just a meal every day for a week. Miss one meal every day for a week and spend that time fasting. But if you do that, the reason for doing it is so that you might pray. And that's the reason to fast is so that you might pray. There may be something special on your heart that you want to... Uh, that you want God to do, and you're willing to and, and you're willing to give up a meal or to give up a, a day's a day's food so that so that you might be, be able to spend more time with God and more time time with Him alone. So Nehemiah fasted and he prayed. Now let's look at that word "pray" just for a little bit. <clears throat> uh, someone look up First Samuel chapter number sixteen and verse number twenty-two. All right, while you're looking that up, let me give another one. 1 Samuel 2, 22. Somebody get 16, 22. Somebody on, somebody on my right get 16, 22, and somebody on my left get uh, 1 Samuel 2, 22. Y'all in the middle go both ways. Now, there's, the, there's where we're talking about where the word pray, it means an entreaty. He said, I pray thee. Now, you look the word up and it means to entreat someone, to, uh, you know, to uh, about beg someone, to, to ask someone. Now, it'd be, like, it'd be like me going to Brother Max. Max probably got a good chainsaw, you know, and I'm always tearing up one. And I, and I go to Max and say, Max may... I pray you, let me borrow your chainsaw. Max said, you tore up enough now. Go get, go, go get James to fix yours. But I, but, said, but I pray thee, Max, can I use your chainsaw? Now that's kind of what, and when you see this, you, I, I didn't count all the times it's used in that connotation or however it's used uh, the other way, but that is the way that it is used in Scripture sometimes. So when we, when we say that part of pray, it's not, necess- it's not necessary talking to the God of heaven. 1 Samuel 2, 22. Now, now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they labored for me and they assembled at the door. Did you say 22? Uh, 1 Samuel 2, 22. 1 Samuel 2, 22. That's the wrong verse. That's the wrong verse. I've done something wrong with that one then. All right, First Chronicles seventeen twenty five. <clears throat> First person that gets it. First Chronicles seventeen twenty five. To pray, how before thee. Now, friend, that that is a way to pray. That's the way when we should pray. Is we should pray before God, pray before Him. Now, you say, how else is there to pray? Well, if I get down, if I if I start to pray and I have sin in my life and I'm bound at that altar right there to pray and I've got sin in my life, I'm not praying before God. I'm praying before that altar because that's where my prayer ends. But if I, if I want to talk to God and I've got sin in my life, I get in that altar and I say, Lord, I confess. I know I've done it. Will you forgive me? And God forgives me. And then I begin to pray before God of heaven. And that's, that's the part of praying that you and I should get used to, the, the part where we pray before the God of heaven. Now, men pray all the time. They'll pray to something all the time, you know, and, uh, and, and they'll, you know, I pray to a false god. That, that goes on a lot in this world that we live in. And I know the very devout Muslim people, when I was, see, I was in, I was in Egypt. And uh, at a certain time every day, now I've seen some of this in Israel, but most of it I saw in Egypt because that's a, that's a, a, you know, a Muslim country. And every time at a certain time of the day, you'd hear that 
prayer call go off and you can look around. Those devout Muslims, not everybody, but those devout Muslims would pull out their prayer cloth and they'd look to see which way uh, Mecca was. They'd look to see which way that was and they'd put that prayer cloth down and you'd see them go to doing this. And they was praying. Now they, they were very, very devout in doing so. I mean, it didn't matter where they was at or who they was around. They'd get a place where they could get their prayer rug down and there they would pray. Now friend, how many of us, how many uh, uh, of us tonight would do that? Now it makes you think, don't it? Now I'm not saying to do that. I'm not. You know, the Bible says in the secret place. The Bible says that you know we we go to the Lord and talk to Him in the secret place. But now I was in a place the other day, and a lady I was I was talking to her I was over in the nursing home, and I was talking to her, and she said, "Preacher, would you would you please pray for me?" She said, "Would you pray for me?" And I thought, I don't know you, I've never seen you, but I'm going to pray for you. And right there in the hall, I prayed for her, and and uh, tickled her to death. Now, my first thought was, yeah, I'll pray for you, ma'am, and go my way. But the Lord said, you pray for her right now, you pray for her. How many of us are willing to pray for folks, you know, in that manner, in that fashion? And we pray before the God of heaven when, when we have the opportunity to pray. Lord, help us to pray. God, help us to put more into our prayer life. Now, I'll tell you something. This group that's here tonight, there's uh, quite a few folks that are not here. But this group that is here tonight, if we will take the lesson of the word of God and pray, and if we begin to pray now, and we pray before Wednesday night service, because we'll probably do this again Wednesday night, and uh, before Sunday morning service, you watch, the, you watch the difference that our praying will make in the services at the house of God, and you watch what difference it'll make in your life, and you just see how important it is that we pray. Uh, 2 Chronicles chapter number 7 and verse number 14. Second Chronicles seven fourteen, the recipe for revival verse. That I, that's what I call that verse, the recipe for revival verse. Now everybody, write that one down, or, or remember it, or mark it in your Bible. And between now and Wednesday night, read that at least once a day. If you have to, you know, if you have to copy and paste it and, and print it out or something like that, do that. But I'm asking everyone here to read that at least one time a day between now and Wednesday night. Now. I've got enough here. We could go on for two or three more hours, but I'm going to stop right there. I think we've, I think we've had enough food to chew on about praying until Wednesday night. But now this is what I'm going to do for the next few services, and we'll see where the Lord directs us. I just want people to pray, and I won't. I won't. See, I always notice when I do a study on prayer, I do a do some messages on prayer. I always notice that it helps me. So if nobody else gets help from it, I'm going to help. I'm going to get help, and I'm going to pray more. And then you say, well, should it be like that? I don't know. I don't know if it should be like that or not. But anything that will help me to pray, I, I pray, Lord, help me to pray. Now, I know people that, uh, that have, I've got models of, of prayer warriors in my life that, that I've watched in my lifetime. Uh, as a little boy, I, my daddy, my daddy is a praying man. And uh, I remember a particular time, at the, and I was just a little fella. I remember a particular time when, I don't know if the church was between pastors and they were seeking, they were trying to find a pastor. I don't remember exactly what it was. But on Sunday afternoon, I remember uh, some men gathering at the house with my daddy. And there was a pine hill up above my house. And they crawled to the top of that pine hill. And, they, and uh, I could hear them up there praying. Now, me and my buddies, you know, we were down there. And, and out of curiosity, I wanted to see what was going on like a little boy would. I wanted to see what was going on. So me and my friends, we eased up that hill and I observed those men up there crying out to God. You know why? They wanted to touch heaven. They wanted to get a hold of the Lord for some reason. And friend, we need that today. That, that is old fashioned, you say. That is still right. Uh, it may be old fashioned, but it's still right. And, uh, and, uh, and so if, if you don't have anything else to pray about, then you pray for this preacher. And I'm asking you to pray for this preacher that we... Uh, that we be faithful in the pulpit. 
And that we, you pray for you, pray for you, preach, say, Lord, help him to pray. Amen. And uh, th that we'll stay in touch with the Lord. God's wanting to do greater things here at Gabriel's Creek than, than I believe the church has known in its history. I believe God wants to do it right here. And I believe it'll come if God's people will pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God tonight. And Lord, I pray that you would bless it. And God, I pray that you keep it upon our hearts and minds that we'll pray this week more than we did last week. Pray tomorrow more than we did today. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, anyone else got anything?